Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today we are continuing on our series of starting new armies. Today we're talking about Skaven, our little rat men that can. So, this is a challenging army for new players. I really want to get that clear up front. It is very complex. There's a lot of war scrolls. The army really relies on a lot of synergy to be strong, but it is a strong and diverse force, and there's a lot of different builds that can be successful. One of the things that also is a deterrent to newer players is that it is very much a horde-based army, so you have a lot of models to paint. It is not uncommon for a Skaven list to field 150 to 200 models. Just sort of the way it is. Um, and that makes it challenging and daunting for new players, for sure. Uh, but the aesthetic is really cool, original, different, and that is very attractive to some people. And the army overall is pretty popular, so I wanted to address that for newer players that are taking a look at it and hopefully break it down to be a little less uh, overwhelming to newer players. So we will begin where we always do at the battle line. Now, Skaven's battle line is the first place that the army begins to get complicated. So... We have generic battle line. We've got our clan rats. They're a big, cheap horde that, with all of the ways in the army to avoid battle shock, is a great tar pit. You, you can field units of 40 clan rats, and your opponent's going to have to do 50 damage or 40 damage to those clan rats to kill them all. Um, Storm vermin are your other generic battle line and they're another good horde unit that is really more of a hammer it really can throw a lot of damage out there they also have recently gotten a points reduction that makes them much more competitive than they once were so looking at our other battle line options you'll see here that i broke it out by clan so how this works is if you are all of your models in one clan, it unlocks the clan battle line. Uh, with the exception of allowing one master clan unit. So, if you have all Molder models in your army, you can have giant rats and... Rat Ogres as your battle line. However, that means you cannot take Clan Rats and Storm Vermin, nor can you take anything else from any other clan, save one model from uh, Master Clan. So, I say that this is sort of informational that you can do this, Everything on the right side here, I really don't recommend, especially for new players. Um, competitive players, I really don't recommend it for either. It's a fun sort of narrative, fluffy thing to do, to go all into one clan. Um, but as far as competitive lists, I don't really see... Uh, going all into one being that valuable... And there's a lot that you miss out on by doing that and very little that you gain. So I'm going to cover some of these units later on as well, uh, just sort of considering them as non-battle line units. Typically, you are just allowed to mix and match all of your clans within your Skaven army. But if you are going all in on one clan... Uh, it really limits your choices. All right, so let's take a quick look at our key heroes. So we have our Gray Seer. That is your staple wizard that casts two spells a turn. He 
his casting rolls can be on uh, 3d6 dropping the lowest. He has access to a fantastic spell lore with a lot of cool options. Just overall, a really good choice. I've definitely seen lists run multiple Grey Seers in the past um, to get different spells out of that spell lore. The Arch Warlock is your next choice. That's out of Clan Scryer. And he is another double caster. His uh, spells have really good synergy with Clan Scryer and the Clan Scryer abilities that got unlocked by having a Scryer hero are also really good. It's one of the better clans overall and something that your army can really be built around. For a cheaper option, you can go with the Warlock Engineer or Bombardier. Uh, only slight weapons differences between those two. Otherwise, the War Scroll is the same. They're really a cheaper alternative to the Arch Warlock. They're single casters. They're more squishy than the Arch Warlock, which has a three up save and I think six wounds. So it's definitely a, a lighter unit, but still very valuable. And you need the Scryer hero there, at least one, to unlock the Scryer Allegiance abilities. Your Claw Lord, that is your Clan Verminous uh, hero. And he has a great command ability that adds one to attacks for your Clan Rats and uh, Storm Vermin. That is also very valuable. And with the Claw Horde Battalion, that can then affect multiple units, not just one. So he can really be a great little tool to take your clan rats, which are normally just a big squishy blob that stops your opponent from advancing, and really turn them into a little bit more of an offensive piece. And then, of course, taking your storm vermin and just taking them up to 11. Uh, Gracier on Screaming Bell is another fine choice. That is, along with the Gracier, another Master Clan choice. That is a really powerful piece. It is still a wizard with uh, double casting. Its spell is pretty good. It has a 13 inch uh, battle shock immunity bubble around it. And that is really strong. It's very good to basically have a unit of clan rats or a unit of storm vermin sort of following this thing around or rather the screaming bell following that unit around and giving them battle shock immunity uh and the bell itself you roll for each of your hero phases to get a random ability that's generated from the table on the war scroll. Uh, all of them are, you know, minor buffs or debuffs and are generally not that exciting, but can make a little bit of a difference here and there. And our last hero, Plague Priest on Plague Furnace. So he has a prayer that can add one to the attacks of plague monks, which we'll talk about later, but they're a really strong offensive unit. And this has the same 13 inch battle shock immunity bubble that the screaming bell does. So I have definitely run lists with two screaming bells because they are that powerful. Also, I have done one screaming bell and a plague furnace. They're both really good. Um, You'll notice here that I have left off Eshin and Molder heroes. Uh, those two clans are generally not as strong as the others and really just don't see much play. And their allegiance abilities that would get opened up by their heroes are not fantastic either. So these are the main ones that you're looking at that are going to be your real staple heroes that you're going to be seeing in most lists. In addition to this, we also have the Vermin Lords, which we're going to talk about later on. But 
for now, these are, you know, the main heroes that you're going to have when you're starting out a Skaven army. So our other units that are, are of note. Now, this is not a comprehensive list of all of the units in the army. This is really just the ones that are generally better, the things that you're probably going to want to pick up first uh, when you're first starting an army. And, you know, if you want to play around with some of the other things later on, you're certainly welcome to. And if you just like some of the other cool models, uh, for example, the Doom Wheel is pretty popular just for being generally cool. Um, but these are our main contenders for powerful units uh, other than your generic battle line that you're going to regularly see. Plague Monks, uh, they are back again. They were our Clan Pestilence battle line choice. They're a really great hard-hitting horde. They're pretty much a glass cannon, though. They really don't have much on the defensive side. So they're the sort of thing that you charge at your opponent and hope they kill whatever they touch. The good thing is they're really powerful, so they're probably going to kill whatever they touch. They're really powerful. Um, I've seen lists running a lot of Plague Monks. You can really build a list around Plague Monks and have it be really solid. Our next up is Scryer Acolytes. These are also battle line for Clan Scryer. Um, a note on these, these models are really expensive. I believe they're currently 15 US dollars for one model in uh, the GW store, and they're not available uh, other than direct order, and they're still old metal sculpts. They are, however, one of the more powerful units in the army. They're, they have an 8-inch shooting attack which on first look doesn't seem like it's terribly exciting. Why would an 8-inch shooting attack be good? Well, they move 6 inches and they can run and shoot. So that gives them a 22-inch threat range. That's a lot of space to be working with. I'm sorry, a 20-inch threat range. Uh, 6-inch move plus 6-inch run plus... 8 inches of shooting. So 20 inches, that can get across the board in a lot of scenarios on top of turn 1 and get there and delete a unit. Which these guys can definitely do, particularly with the synergy with the Clan Scryer Allegiance abilities. Uh, in addition, we've got Storm Fiends. These guys are your big mutated cyborg rats. They are very cool looking and they're also really solid units. They are very tanky. They can take a lot of damage and they're pretty solid shooting units in addition to that. Uh, alternatively, with you can build the models differently and go for more of a melee oriented build, but it's not as strong as the shooting option. And once again, this has synergy with uh, the Allegiance abilities and the spell lore, which power them up even further. Uh, so they are really good, and this sees play in a lot of competitive lists. Rattling Guns up next. Now, I'd like to note also that aside from the Plague Monks, everything in here is Clan Scryer. Clan Scryer is really good. And it's really the thing that you're probably going to build around the most in your armies. So, Rattling Guns, they're a really strong mid-range shooting option. They do 2d6 attacks, and you can power them up to do four, uh, 2 times 4d6, uh, sorry, 2 times 2d6 attacks. Um for the low, low price of possibly having it blowing up if you roll doubles on your 2d6. Um, rend 1, 1 damage, but that could be 
very powerful. On average, you're going to throw out 14 shots. And these things are very cheap and like at like 80 points. And with synergies from Clan Scryer, you can be re-rolling hits and wounds. You can have damage too. You can uh, also, with your gnaw holes, uh, teleport them to key places on the map. They are really strong. They're a lot stronger than their stat line looks like. And because of the mobility that you get with gnaw holes and just the ability to run them up behind your troops, um, they can deal out a lot of damage throughout the game. Warplock Gisales are basically snipers. So they come in units of three, uh, good hit and wound roll, two damage attacks, um, and all of that can get buffed up further again, just like the Rattling Gun and the Storm Fiends and the Acolytes. Uh, they have very long range, and they're going to be able to put a hurting on your opponent, especially because their shots are uh, Rend 2. And our last one is the Warp Lightning Cannon. Now, this is a really unique piece. Uh, I would say even just for the game, it's a pretty unique piece. This thing basically just does mortal wounds at a 24-inch range. And the number of mortal wounds that it deals is randomly determined, but there is no hit roll or wound roll. There's no save. It's just mortal wounds. If your opponent has uh, some sort of ward save, then they could potentially prevent those mortal wounds, but they're in general, is just spewing damage across the board. Uh, and with the die roll, it is potentially, uh, if you power up the cannon and risk doing damage to itself, uh, can do up to 12 mortal wounds to one target in one shooting phase. So, very powerful. Really good. So the Vermin Lords, I told you I was going to get to these guys. They are, I think, the most expensive models in the Skaven range. I think uh, Thankwool might be more expensive. Um, they're also expensive points-wise. They're really strong, though. Uh, four out of the five are really good. There's also a sixth that is a Forge World model that is hard to get your hands on and is not that great. But uh, out of the ones that we do have, uh, I just want to go over them real quick because these could be good additions to your army. Uh, preface on this, I don't have a tremendously large Skaven army, but I have three Vermin Lords because they're just that good. And I want to grab a fourth. Uh, the only one that's listed here that I don't currently have is the Warbringer. Uh, the other three I do have already. <laughs> So, our Vermin Lord Warpseer, uh, he has uh, extra command points that he can give to you uh, on a three up in your hero phase. You get an extra command point, and um, he has uh, other abilities uh, out of the, uh, if he's your general or has an artifact to get more command points in addition to that. Uh, he's got a great command ability that has a 36-inch bubble of Battleshock immunity. Really big, very effective. Um, and his spell is uh, a movement debuff at, uh, I believe, a 26-inch range. So he can cut a unit's movement in half, which is very good. Uh, the Vermin Lord Corruptor... Uh, most notable thing about him is that he has a spell which will just cut hordes in half. Uh, you roll a d6 for each model in the targeted unit, and for every four up, it does a mortal wound. So, it's a horde killer for sure. The Vermin Lord Warbringer, uh, he is pretty good on offense, I should note, in addition to this. His spell uh, lets the units in the targeted, uh, I'm sorry, models in the targeted units fight at, as they die. So potentially getting two attacks in one bat in one turn 
or you know if the unit hasn't been activated for combat yet it can get attacks in even though models are dying and its command ability lets you reroll hits and wounds for other clan verminous uh, units that would be your battle line uh, your clan rats and your uh, storm vermin so overall uh, he is really good and makes you a lot more offensive uh, and then the last one is the vermin lord deceiver he has a spell that lets you teleport a hero which is including himself uh, to anywhere on the battlefield that is more than six inches away from the enemy uh, normally abilities like that would be nine inches away from the enemy. A six inch charge is real easy to make. Uh, he's a really good assassin unit. Um, he can just duck in behind enemy lines and just gank enemies. S s just snipe out those heroes, uh, all of those squishy things in the backfield that your opponent wants to try and protect. You can just get right in there and get killing. So that is it on Skaven for now. Not terribly complicated in the review of them, although once you start digging into the book, they're a very complicated army. I know I mentioned a lot of different synergies uh, and different abilities in here, and that's really the important thing to remember when you're building this army, that it's all about the cross synergy between all of the different pieces and making sure you have the right heroes to go along with the right units, the right spells on your wizards, uh, the right vermin lord or vermin lords to pick to go with your army. All important things. Uh, but that, I think, is a decent primer for playing Skaven. Um, I feel like at some point I want to go on a deeper dive into Skaven because they're a very strong army and they're not easy. They're not an easy army to play. Uh, and they're also one of my favorite armies uh, because they're complex, interesting, have a lot of different synergies. Um, definitely my favorite army right after Nurgle uh, and fairly close after Nurgle, I must say. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you are not already a subscriber, you can lovingly caress that subscribe button for more. Um, if you throw on notifications, you'll get alerts when uh, our new videos get posted. We do have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. And as always, we also have our uh, social media pages in the description for Facebook and Twitter. That's all for now, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.